Hello everybody! Today we're going to take a quick look at Dune Part 2, directed by Denis Villeneuve and starring Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya. This picks up pretty much where Part 1 left off, as Paul Atreides, the last surviving member of his house, has sided with the Fremen in their ongoing struggle against the Harkonnen, still led by that floating fat bastard Baron Vladimir and his psychotic nephew Fade Rautha. Some of the Fremen believe Paul to be their Muad'Dib, or Messiah, a role he is reluctant to accept at first. Others, like Paul's love interest Chani, believe the stories about the Muad'Dib are simply a way to control the Fremen. And Paul has a difficult decision to make. He can either continue fighting with just the northern Fremen resistance, or he can try to recruit the southerners who are a bit more fundamentalist. This would greatly bolster their forces, but also risk starting a holy war. I very much enjoyed part one, and unsurprisingly, like part two a lot as well. And unlike part one, which came out when COVID was still ravaging the country, I got to see this on the big screen, and that is really the way to do it if you get the chance. I really became a fan of Denis Villeneuve's work with Blade Runner 2049, and once again, he has created a visual masterpiece. This is very much a work of art, and his visual style suits this sci-fi epic very well. I especially liked his use of color. We have the dirty brown world of Arrakis, the lush green of the Emperor's homeworld, and also the gray of the Harkonnen homeworld that's lit under a black sun. Every shot in this movie is stunning, but also serves a purpose and furthers the story. There is no wasted motion here, which is remarkable considering the 2 hour 45 minute runtime. Even the scenes we get with Emperor Shaddam and Princess Arulin, played respectively by Christopher Walken and Florence Pugh, Brief as they are, still serve a purpose. My only real problem with those scenes is I wish we had more, but Pew does a great job with the little time she's given. And it is definitely a cautionary tale against religious fanaticism, which somehow went over some people's heads and for the life of me I do not understand why. Like, it's not subtle. And even Paul, who has been labeled the Fremen's chosen one, is not immune to getting caught up in this prophecy. At first, he does not want to be the Muad'Dib at all. He just wants to fight the Harkonnen who almost wiped out his entire bloodline. But those who want to believe in the prophecy just cannot be swayed, even when Paul flat out tells them, Hey, I am not your messiah. Immediately after that, Javier Bardem's character is like, Only the true messiah would be too humble to admit he's the messiah. How shall we fuck off, O oh Lord? But over time, Paul kind of starts to buy into his own hype and seems to believe he actually is their messiah, even though he knows for a fact the entire prophecy is bullshit. Kind of reminds me of L. Ron Hubbard in a way, who started Scientology purely as a grift, but seems to me in his later years he actually started to believe his own story. I really liked Rebecca Ferguson as Lady Jessica, she was excellent, and she's clearly the mastermind behind everything that's going on here. While Paul is out fighting on the front lines and learning how to ride sandworms, she's working her magic behind the scenes and manipulating people and elevating her son and the prophecy. Stellan Skarsgård as Baron Harkonnen is just plain disgusting, and I mean that as a compliment. He does everything possible to just make you hate his guts. He radiates evil, and probably several foul smells. We also get to meet his nephew, Fade Rautha, played by Austin Butler, and after seeing him in Elvis, he is unrecognizable here. He's just an incredibly talented actor, and in this movie, pants-weddingly scary. The Baron is just a horrible, disgusting creature, but Fade Rautha is the one that will live in your nightmares. And of course we have Zendaya as Chani, who we briefly saw in the first movie, but really gets to shine here. And her story and her performance are just heartbreaking. She clearly is in love with Paul, despite being skeptical of the prophecy from the beginning. And she can see him slowly slipping away as he continues to embrace his messianic role. She's being pulled in two directions, and you know something's gotta give eventually and it ain't gonna be pretty. Overall, this movie was excellent, and Dune could very well become our next big epic sci-fi franchise. I don't know if it'll be as big as Star Wars, but the potential is there. And the end of the movie certainly leaves the door open for a sequel, and Herbert wrote plenty of books, so it's not like they don't have the material. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend doing so. It's well worth the money. And that's all I have to say about Dune Part 2. Till next time, take care.